Well, I think regardless of the start, I think Australia will just hang in there and, and play out a strong 80 minutes. And uh, it, it's easy to pick Australia because they haven't been beaten over here for 12, season, or 12 years. So Australia's got to be the, uh, if, if you're a punting man and you want to put some money down, you'd, you'd back Australia. But uh, I, for the good of the game in Great Britain, I'd, uh, it wouldn't surprise me and, and uh, I wouldn't be that disappointed to see a Great Britain result. Right. John Money, the coach of Wigan, thank you very much. You're going to join Ray French up in the commentary box. And uh, I think we'll join Ray French right now. Thank you, Des. 82 years since the Kangaroos opened that first ever test series here in London. And I don't think I've ever seen anything like this then when he kicked off at Queen's Park Rangers. The 80 strong Philharmonia chorus of amateur singers. Land of hope and glory. And the cheers possibly slightly drowning this famous song. A lot of nerves, a lot of tension. And I think the question is, how will it affect the Australians? They're not used to this traditional event here at Wembley. The strains of the song ringing around this famous stadium. Little Andy Gregory, as proud as ever been. Six appearances here, Gregory, never lost yet. Keith Barnes, the... Australian manager leading on in the mighty Mal Meninga. But tremendous support has come down from the north and tremendous support from London. Over 25% of this record test crowd in Britain. Tickets sold here in London. Again, a direct result of the influence of the game now. The combined bands of the Queen's Lancashire Regiment and the 1st Battalion of the Royal Irish Guards entertain the ground in regal fashion and the traditional style lineup that we're accustomed to see at the challenge cup Go! Go! the always a nervous time this especially in front of a test crowd as big as this approaching 60,000 at first ever test series kicked off here in London with a 2,000 crowd at Queen's Park Rangers now the 17th Australian tour party see things so much differently but let's hope we see as many points as we did that first day 44 points split the honours even and the dignitary is coming along now Harry Jepson the president of the Rugby Football League introducing Lord Haslam the Chairman of British Coal to the Australian side. And Malmeninga, 16 stone 12, a real power. Gary Belcher, the fullback. Michael Hancock, only 20 years of age, forced his way into this tour party from Brisbane Broncos. One of the real threats, two hat tricks already. Andrew Ettingshausen, three against Wigan, three against St Helens. Ricky Stewart coming at number six for Laurie Daly. Daly out with a broken bone in his hand. And the big men, the 17 stone giants, Steve Roach. The hooker, Kerrod Walters. Martin Bella saw good service with Halifax. And just look at this lad, six foot four, 17 stone eight. Paul Sirenen. John Cartwright. Bob Lindner. And little Bob Ashby there, the chairman of the Rugby League almost dwarfed at the side of these green and gold giants. They'll be employing that power to try to break the British ranks. And Mr Jepson now just having a word with Maurice Lindsay, the Great Britain manager, Mal Reilly, the Great Britain coach. And the substitutes first of all, Sean Edwards, from happy memories of his last appearance here at Wembley when he received that fractured cheekbone. David Hume, Ellery Hanley, great campaigner here, Roy Powell from Leeds good tackler, had a good game for Leeds against the Australians last week Dennis Betts two of the younger members now Lee Jackson of Hull 
and the man making his debut, Carl Harrison. Little Andy Gregory and Gary Schofield, certainly one of the linchpins if Great Britain are to make success, and Martin O'Fire, his first ever appearance at Wembley, this ex Rosslyn Park flyer. Carl Gibson, Paul Eastwood, who did so well in New Zealand and the tour of Papua New Guinea, and Sean Hampson. Just a last minute drink. Kenny Arthurson there, nice to see him, the chairman of the Australian Rugby Football League, flown over especially for this occasion. Just awaiting the formalities of the national anthems. Last minute instructions there from the doctor, Forbes McKenzie. The two wingmen, I think, obviously saying, look, uh, Let's get another corner, and I think we'll see a lot of these two lads crisscrossing and coming in the middle. Mal really, the last word of encouragement. <laughs> Phil Larder, the British director of coaching, and little Bobby Fulton there in the corner, the last time he played here at Wembley in 1973. Certainly getting behind this British team. Great Britain, maybe the underdogs. But we all remember that famous test back in 1988 when Great Britain went into that match crippled by injuries and won the game. So, Australia, first to break. Obviously, wanting to get into the action. The Australians getting the first feel of this turf. It looks in superb condition, and Australia just the one change from their first choice test side. Standoff Laurie Daly, number six, is out suffering from a broken bone in his hand. And former Wallabies from half Ricky Stewart takes his place. The big men there in the middle, Roach, Bella, Sirenan, and Cartwright, they'll take some stop. And the question is. Can Mal Meninga, the big giant centre, be stopped? Well, there is the fighting kangaroo. That's got to be put down this afternoon. And Great Britain welcome back the skipper, Ellery Hanley, for his first test since those severe pelvic problems put him off the trip to New Zealand. Youngsters, Paul Eastwood, Darrell Powell, Dennis Betts rewarded for their progress there out in New Zealand. But I think much will depend on those two half-backs. Gary Schofield, Andy Gregory, everyone will be rooting for those. And we must get the ball to Martin O'Fire. We'll certainly be looking for a couple of his special tries. And just to keep that kangaroo, there is the line. 
Huge roar for little Andy Gregory, number seven. Wasn't quite fit when he played for Wigan against Australia a couple of weeks ago, but we all know this cheeky little chap. He'll be battling away. Won the Lance Todd Trophy here twice in the in the Challenge Cup. Only five foot four inches, but a heart as big as any player on this field. And Dennis Spets, one of the younger forwards, really making his name in the game now. It's Wigan, 21 years old, second row. Won five of those caps on the summer tour to Papua New Guinea and New Zealand. And of course, one of the world's greatest players, Ellery Hanley. Thankfully, fit after that severe pelvic problem that kept him out of the Wigan side for four to five months. Great Britain certainly looking for a big game from this captain. Magnificent atmosphere uh, out there, John. Well, it's a fantastic atmosphere, and I, you know the players are, are at this moment are very nervous. They're very hyped up, and they're all ready for a big start. Should be great. Malmeninger, there was a slight doubt earlier in the week. He pulled out of training at Roehampton with a slight leg strain, but this big 16 stone 12 powerhouse, he's there. Australia owes so much to this lad. Gary Belcher, superb fullback there from the Canberra Raiders club. Very, very quick, very, very fast. Likes to come up, likes to attack in the three-quarter line. Looks very, uh, very tense, one or two of these Australian players, John. Well, it's a very, very big occasion for them. Uh, I, I know personally from from uh, the feeling in Australia that they all want to play at Wembley. It's a, it's a great carrot to be dangled in front of them. And uh, for them to be able to come out here, here at Wembley, 50,000 people, uh, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure they're very nervous as well. Paul Sunanen. And the referee there, Monsieur Alain Sable Roll from France, not the most experienced, not the most experienced of uh, of referees. Just refereed the Great Britain v France under 21 game. Much will depend on him. I think I'd like to see him, uh, John, get the two teams well apart from each other, so we get a good open game. Well, the Australian players are used to playing a very, very big five, and uh, I think it's been to their advantage coming over here that we play a skinny five in England, and if uh, the referee can keep the packs apart, I'm sure we'll see a great open game of rugby league. So, here we are, the formalities over, the first British call test, the coaches all teed up, this is what rugby is all about. Great Britain not won a test here in Great Britain for 12 years since 1978. Can we break that? Well, ignominious record, if you like, today. Off we go. Gary Schofield puts the ball deep. And already Australia using these big forwards to drive down the middle, plough down the middle. That's good pressure from Great Britain. Gregory. Good pass, but a good tackle by Linda. Betts driving in. Only the third ever rugby league test at Wembley in 1963, and as long ago as 1973. But of course, nothing like this, and there is a penalty. Monsieur Sable Roll indicating that that was a high tackle from Martin Bella. And certainly, John, this man's in very, very quickly, wasn't he? Yes, he was, but uh, situations like this, the kick-off, Australia didn't want to make a mistake in the first six tackles. They came up with a drop ball on the second tackle, and here we have a penalty on the 22-metre on the line. It's just the start that Great Britain needed. OK, it's a, it's a very high tackle. He comes in high. It's number 10, and... Uh, Martin Bell has come right over the top with a swinging arm. Uh, the, the and Paul Eastwood, his first kick of the match. Obviously, 
there'll be nerves in this youngster but he was the Mr Consistency on tour in New Zealand 72 points 18 goals and he scored in 30 consecutive matches in the in the league and it's not the most difficult of shots but a wind swirling around here at Wembley so can Eastwood from Hull put good heart into this Great Britain side left footed oh he hits the post he hits the post and those really John they're the sort of goals that must go over if you're going to win matches here at Wembley well you've got to kick your goals you've got to uh, you've got to take all your opportunities when they come although Great Britain side have got great field position now so they've just got to hold them down here force Australia to kick from deep in their own 22 I would think Paul Eastwood could probably slot those over nine out of ten any day of the week but it's at Wembley the pressure's on and occasionally you miss them so still Great Britain nil Australia nil Cadet Walters the ball back to Ricky Stewart and I think we'll see this boy Stewart kicking this ball long and deep good catch by Hampson viewers should note there Australia keeping 10 yards off Steve Hampson the new rule this season players in an offside position must keep 10 yards and not 5 yards Schofield good gummy but a good tackle by Walters and offside Monsieur Sabley well, very firm on the whistle not the most difficult of kicks but he just slices that ball obviously I think nerves he's not into this game as yet and it's no points now then what's uh, Paul Eastwood contemplating I don't think it would be worthwhile having a kick at goal from here he's going to go to touch keep the pressure on Australia keep the pressure down to this corner not a bad kick I think John Gravelin have got to play the game in this Australian half haven't they well it's a it's a catch cry of coaches now we all talk about field position and by field position we mean we've got to get the ball down into this area and Great Britain's got to play out a very strong six tackles inside the opposition's 30 meter zone now if you can play a lot of a lot of the game down here and uh, you know you're looking for a mistake from the opposition or a good set play like we're seeing now and uh, anything can happen Hanley almost getting away the short ball for Lee Jackson Lee Jackson this uh, young hooker from Hull likes to run from the acting half-back position knock on Darrell Powell just getting his first touch of the ball there sadly for Great Britain a knock on this number three from Sheffield Needles and Monsieur Sabley Roll keeping the packs back little Alan Langer, the number seven, Brisbane Broncos from half to feed. Good play. Good play there from uh, number six, Ricky Stewart, normally a scrum half. Just looking at that feed, uh, both, both coaches will be uh, hoping that the referee, if he's going to play those sort of feeds, he's got to play them for the entire 80 minutes. The ball went in, it was Australia's feed, and Australia won the ball. It was a no contest scrum, and uh, that's the way it's going to be. Both coaches will be happy. Good tackle there on Meninga, but I don't think Monsieur Sable rolls happy. He's not at all. He's penalising Ellery Hanley for... Yes, for going in with the knee on Meninga. Well, I like what I've seen so far from this uh, Frenchman. I don't think Ellery Hanley does, but, uh, well, at least he's not back-chatting this time. He's certainly keeping these two sides apart. He's uh, setting out uh, what he means. And Malmeninga. <laughs> Australia waiting for the ball boys. The ball boys from the London Schools Rugby League. And the short pass, the driving run from number 10, Martin Bella, 26 years old from the Manly Club, had a spell for two seasons in the mid-80s with Halifax. But these are the simple tactics the Australians employ. Langer, the short pass to these big forwards. And they don't come much bigger than this man, Sirenham, 
six foot four, 17 stone eight. Good tackle there from number 10 for Great Britain, Paul Dixon. Lange. Eastwood going back. A wingman always likes a good early touch of the ball. And a penalty, I think. Yes. Bobby Linda there. Holding on at the play of the ball. I'm surprised at that, John, because especially in Australia, they really are insistent on quick play of the balls, aren't they? Yeah, one of the secrets to uh, winning a game of rugby league, though, if you can, you've got to work the referee out, try and hold the player down as long as possible in the play of the ball and, uh, and not be penalised. Uh, with the French referee... We're just watching it now, so if the player doesn't seem to hit the ground for too long, Bobby's trying to just stall things there and hold him down, give the Australian side a, a chance to line up in defence. Good tackle there by Sirenen on Paul Dixon. Powell. Roy Powell, Mr Dependable as he's known in the Great Britain camp, solid tackler, solid grafter at Schofield again, putting the kicks through, testing Belcher. And it doesn't matter how good your kicks are. That's what kicking through is all about. Your tacklers, Eastwood, Powell and Hanley, making sure that Belcher goes into touch. Early days for Malrini yet, but certainly there's a worried brow. And Andy Gregory to feed. Good scrum. Oh, the dummy by Gibson. Carl Gibson had a good game again for Leeds last week. To Betts, looks for the short ball. Oh, goal could probably have been better employed to hold on to it. The Cliff Gregory just couldn't hold it. But certainly the pressure on Australia. Just nine minutes gone. Australia hardly been out of this half. This is the pressure that Great Britain have got to maintain. Good driving run there from, from Cartwright. The Penrith, the new cap. Oh, that's a bad slip. Certainly, John, there's been a lot of heavy rain overnight, hasn't there? It's, it's made this, uh, this pitch very, very slippery. Yeah, there was some talk about it earlier in the day that they were going to call off the curtain raiser because there was a lot of, uh, a, a lot of moisture in the pitch, and Steve Hampton was just showing us there that uh, the footing underneath's not real great. And we saw one or two lads slipping in the London Select v Moscow Spartak game. Mr Sable Roll, insistent that Australia get back on side. The referee seems to be keeping a good five, Ray. He seems to keep both sides back, but I've noticed already the difference is that the Australians are prepared to move up much quicker in defence than the uh, Great Britain side. He's keeping them back both a good five, but the Australians seem to be jumping the gun that little bit and getting up quicker. So, Great Britain got to get round that to Betts. That's a good run from Betts. Oh, once again, the ball goes down. The short ball to Schofield as the short ball to Gregory can't afford to keep losing possession like that back to Bella to Kenneth Walters back to Langer that's a good tackle by Dennis Betts that cut off the movement Australia using simpler tactics here down the middle with ropes this pack almost a hundred stones in weight and a penalty the referee insisting that the Great Britain tackler there was stealing the ball. So the first attempt at goal from Malmeninga. Not had his kicking boots on, this uh, Canberra Raiders and Australian skipper this season. I think we'll find what happens here is that the, uh, the Great Britain player pulls the foot out as they're about to get up and play the ball. So it's another stalling tactic in the play of the ball. The, uh, the man at Hawk Ford is Lee Jackson. He pulls the foot up at the back. Yeah, very, very silly there, because, of course, it could cost two points.
and Meninga waiting for Sand. This now, it's it's maybe a little uh, little little bit of an experience there from uh, from the hooker. He uh, he took the odds to pulling the foot up, and you know we know in big games you can't get away with those sort of penalties. So Mal Meninga only kicked seven goals on this tour so far. One of the few kickers in the game these days who actually approaches the ball so end on. And he's missed that one. That's a good run from Hampson. Oh, is it worth the kick? Magnificent run from Stevie Hampson there, the Wigan fullback. He was looking for support, he just wasn't there. But Hanley now, Great Britain on full charge. Good tackle. Good tackle there from John Cartwright. But Britain on the attack. Gregory not risking the short pass there. Schofield again. That's a good kick. That's a well judged kick. Well, could you have a kick more accurate than that? Superb effort there from Gary Schofield. His 27th test cap here, and there looks to be some concern there from the doctor, Dr. Fox McKenzie. But uh, I don't think they'll be wanting to see this lad injured. They'll want 80 minutes played out of this lad. Australia ball then, five yards from their own line. To Langer. Hampson and Hanley in again, the Wigan combination. Great Britain, of course, won the series in New Zealand in the summer. These lads like Eastwood, Jackson, Powell, Betts and Gibson all played a prominent part, hopefully matured. To Sirenen, well taken. Looks to be a hesitancy, John, in midfield with these kangaroos. There is a little bit. That was a little bit of bad luck there, Ray. They, uh, the front rowers are doing a very good job for Australia, though. They're advancing the ball one out, and each time they're getting well over the advantage line. The Great Britain forwards have just got to keep moving up. They're not moving up well enough. And another pressure kick there from Australia. Eastwood, well taken. He'll just want to hold end of this ball, wait for his pack to get there. But they're not back yet. Hampson's going to have to go himself. Offside again. Well, a lot of people wondered whether the Australians might take advantage of this referee They're with the speed off the mark of the play of the ball. But he's penalised them three times already. Very, very firm. Score still Great Britain nil, Australia nil. 15 minutes gone in this match. Just the Paul Eastwood miss and the Malman Inga miss goal. Carl Harrison, full prop, making his debut. Let's go field again. Good tackle by Langer, but I'm sure it's a penalty. It's a high tackle again. Well. I think uh, Monsieur Sable Rowe is certainly laying the law down. He's having nothing above the chest, and quite rightly. Well, Gary Schofield goes across the ground. Alan Langer, being such a small player, has taken him high. He's tried to take him ball and all, but. And there, Carl Harrison driving in. That's the sort of drive that uh, that we want if we're going to make progress. And here we are, Great Britain making progress. Jackson looking to switch the play to Darrell Powell. Sheffield Eagle centre. That's good play now, then. Jackson. Good ball, can they get it out to a fire? No, good tackle there by Mal Meninga on Paul Dixon. But Great Britain on the attack, good run. 
from Harrison. Little Andy Gregory here calling the shots at the first receiver. Good long ball to Hanley. Gets it away. Back to bet, still moving. But notice that Australian defence coming in. Is it worth a drop goal? Yes, says Andy Gregory. No. Just misses it. So, still the score. Great Britain nil, Australia nil, but well worth the attempt. The old adage, never come away from the opponent's line with nothing. Well, Andy Gregory had plenty of time there to snap off a shot, and a game like this has been going, some points have got to be scored, and if a team can get one point on the board, well, it is a bit of an advantage. Australia struggling to break this very firm Great Britain grip. Cartwright, one of the big men who possibly can break the grip. <laughs> Paul Eastwood going in. I think one or two of these Great Britain lads are fired up. Stewart, that's a good pass to Meninga. Oh, beautiful play by Meninga, but good tackle. Good tackle by Carl Gibson. He followed him, he kept with him. Now then, Australia beginning to look as if they're moving into another gear. Langer. The dummy kick. That's the handover. Back to Hanley. Still going. Just can't get away, but a magnificent run there by Ellery Hanley. The crowd getting behind him. Powell. Australia only conceded 48 points on this tour so far in five matches. Very difficult to break this green and gold cover. You've either got to be quick or very, very strong. Schofield, the little ship kick. Here's the chance. Now then, can he pick it up? Oh, he does. But that was not down. Australia do pick it up. To Hampson. He's cut inside. Good little chip kick from Schofield, back to a fire, looking to thread his way through. Gregory switching the play. No way through. Powell. Monsieur Sable Roll taking the Australians a good five yards back. Gregory again, that's a good pass to Powell. He's got Eastwood on his outside. Just can't get away. Still, Great Britain on the pressure. But for Gregory, slips to Hanley. But a knock on. Great Britain, I think, John, possibly could have made better use of that there in this corner. Yeah, but the main thing is that they keep this good field position. They've been down here for a long time, and if sides of this quality, there's a lot of good players out there, and if, if Great Britain can hold that field position, we'll uh, come up with some points. So, a timely scrum there for Australia. Linda. Castleford uh, supporters will remember Bob Linda having a spell with them. Now then, the referee, a penalty. A penalty to Linda. Yes, he's insane that the, he played the ball to himself when he was being marked. You can't do that. Linda doesn't like it, but it's another chance for Paul Eastwood. The players were not parallel. Well, Bobby Linda just got out of dummy half really, really well. He, he got picked up 15 yards straight down the middle. He didn't think he had a marker. He jumped up to play the ball. I, I think that was a tough decision against Australia. I, I didn't think there was anybody right in front of him. Well, certainly, John, it looked as if there wasn't a marker there, wasn't it? No, well, he got a good dummy half run, and then he hit the ground, got up to play on, and uh, you've got to take the tough decisions with the good decisions, though. Now, as Paul Eastwood settled himself. 32 goals this season with Hull. Had an excellent season, helping the Humberside Club to the top of Division 1. But I'm sure he'd trade a few of those goals for a couple here at Wembley. Still looking for the first points of this match. And it's there. 
Great Britain in the lead. Almost 22 minutes gone. Two points to nil thanks to the Paul Eastwood goal. And I think John really deserving of that lead. Well, it was. Like I was saying earlier, if Great Britain held that good field position, something happens. And uh, whether the penalty was was uh, a fair one or not, it's uh, it's pointless now. They've got the two points. They've uh, they've got a lead. And now they've got to strike back again. It's great play from Great Britain. Very good. The last time Great Britain played here in 1973, they won that test by 21 points to 12. Is that an omen? Roy Powell. Again, good tackle from Sirenen, but these Great Britain forwards still keep coming. Belcher. And that's good play by Great Britain. Hooker there, Lee Jackson, the defenders coming up, containing Australia now, deep in this half. From these positions, the big Australian forwards, not too dangerous. That's a good ball to Sydenham, but that's a good tackle from Eastwood. Came in from the wing there, reminiscent of my old favourites, Billy Boston and Mick Sullivan. Meninga. And Carl Gibson, I think, under instructions, don't let this big man out of your sights. Well, you can't get that big man out of your sights, I don't think. Stewart. Steve Hampton's got a chance here to get up this sideline, and uh, there's a very good tackle, though, from McGaw, so... The kick and chase game from Australia is not bad at the moment either. Interesting to see, John, that uh, Stewart is kicking to this near side all the time. He hasn't put another kick towards the fire's wing, has he? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a safe tactic. If, you, if you've got four wingers on the park, the only winger that I wouldn't kick to would be O'Fire. So, I mean, they've done their homework. They know they can't kick the ball to O'Fire in a little bit of... Uh, with a little bit of space. And that is another good kick from Schofield. It's a punishing one. It sends Belcher back. Plenty of running for this uh, Australian fullback. Good run from Hancock. But very interesting to see there, John. No Australian forward back. No, the Australian forwards, they're, they're doing a little bit tough at the moment, but they've, uh, they've certainly got some good attack here in Australia. And they're prepared to spin the ball on the first to second tackle, and it's a good tactic. And I think there's one thing here that happens at Wembley. For players who have never played on Wembley, you suddenly get very, very tired, whether it's the lust of the, of the turf, the size of the pitch or what. But one or two of these Australians just look to be flying at the moment. Yeah, well, we could see a few points scored in the last ten minutes of the first half. I think that's, uh, that's always on. And like I say, particularly at Wembley, it's, uh, it's a big pitch, it's a tiring pitch, and, uh, you know, you often see the players, they drop down and, and the legs do get weary. So, Australia's really first movement with the ball in the hands in the British 25-yard area. We'll see what this British defence is like. Talanga. Linda. Good switch play there to Meninga. Tackle from Lee Jackson. Now then, was he tackled? The referee says not. And he's uh, instructing them, he wants them back. Oh, that's Powell's ball. Well, that's a bad... It's Hanley's ball, sorry, but that's a bad slip by Kevin Walters. And another bad slip by Australia. Offside again. That's the fourth occasion. And the eighth penalty that Australia have conceded to Great Britain's three. Australians on the bench, and of course, we have four substitutes in this match under international rules this season. Four substitutes allowed on, but only allowed to come on once. We talk about field position, Ray, and I, I think it's, it's interesting to note that every time Australia has been down in that 22 metre area, they've come up with an error. Now, that could be, could be from good uh, Great Britain defence. And uh, as we see, Andy Gregory's just starting to take a lot more first passes, and uh, they're, they're making some good inroads. 
I think uh, one of the problems, although that's another good kick again, but I think one of the problems, although that was a superb kick from Gary Schofield, we've gone 27 minutes, John, and Martin O'Fire hasn't touched the ball yet in any wing position. No, well, that's a chance that you take. I mean, as a as a coach, or Elry, Elry out on the field should be talking to Martin and saying, look, Martin, we need you in the action. Come in here and uh, let's get some ball. If you don't get the ball out in the wings, you've got to go and look for it. So, Australia with the scrum. The sun shining down here on this first Ashes test. Cartwright get through a lot of work, these two second rows. Sirenen and Cartwright, the, the workhorses. Langer here now, launching Sirenen. Good tackle by Martin Afire. He came in, spotted the danger, and I think, uh, yes, I think Sirenen... Kicks and look at the Glandy Gregory there. Five foot four, Sirenen six foot four. We said he had a big heart, Gregory. Got a fire down on the floor. I'm pretty sure that uh, the touch judge there, Willie Walker, spotted Sirenen kicking out in the tackle. Mr. Sadler all says no more than that. And it's a penalty. Well, surely Paul Eastwood will go for goal. Now, there seems to be some debate. But certainly, I'm sure there can't be any debate. Surely, he must go for goal. Well, Siren, and they've, they've hit the ball back after a scrum on the second play. It's a good tackle from Martin. He's coming off the wing. Andy Gregory's just covered him up over the top like you've got to do, and the, the penalty was for Siren and kicking out in the tackle. Yes, yeah, Siren and the big man taking the play out wide. He goes down. It's a question of whether he wants to get up very, very quickly. But there is that right leg striking out. Yeah, it's very dangerous with the boots when you do that to a player too. Eastwood then looking to increase this two points to nil lead for Great Britain. Not the most difficult of kicks, 23 yards out. Just to the right of the post there. He steadies himself, but these are the kicks that win test matches. No, that's missed. So, Paul Eastwood, one kick out of three. Great Britain still two points to nil. Just ten minutes to go in this first half. Great Britain seemingly in command. And a penalty. A penalty against Steve Hampson, I think, for punching. I don't think Steve Hampson really relished that tackle. Well, Hampson's bringing the ball up strongly. He's very brave play with the ball in the air. He's, he's lifted his arm, but I wouldn't say... You know, I don't think he's hit him with an elbow, but maybe the second attempt he's trying to punch at uh, Alan Langer. It's a, it's a very poor thing to do when you've got the ball on the first tackle. So, Australia with six tackles, 30 yards out. But again, a good tackle by Powell. And just look at the sheer bulk on that man sitting and taking three players to put him down. And that's what Australia rely on. They rely on these charging runs from Roach and Ballard and Sirenum, sucking the cover in, bringing the forwards in, and then moving it wide. Here we go. This is the wide ball. Meninga driving through, but a good tackle again by Betts. And Ellery Hanley, well covered by the Great Britain skipper. Walters to Langer. Another six tackles. And a knockoff. And there's situations that Australia are uh, that Australia are looking for to get six down there and then another six and, and uh, to, to lose the ball on the second tackle again, you know, it's a major error. It's uh, there wasn't that much pressure on them. They've just got to play out six tackles down there if they're going to win the game. In fact, John Malmeninga was saying in midweek that he was really concerned about the possession that the Australians were spilling on this tour. Well, one of the one of the reasons you win a game of rugby league is that you do have good ball control, and uh, the Australians have scored a lot of points. They've played a lot of fancy rugby league, and maybe they're uh, trying to play too much fancy rugby league. It's a pretty simple game. 
Well, back shot. The referee insisting that Sydenham gets back. Obviously, Paul Sydenham said something, whether in uh, French or Australian twang, I don't know, but certainly the referee there, Alain Savlerol, understood what Mr Sydenham was saying, and it's a penalty. Not the sort of indiscipline that we're accustomed to seeing from these Australians, but a good kick there from Paul Eastwood. Lee Jackson to take the tap. Dixon. Still looking for the first try of this match. Powell. This first test in any test series, obviously so vital. Good ball to Betts. But again, this green and gold tackling machine, very sound, very sure. Little Andy Gregory here, at first receiver, the architect of these moves, switching the play, moving the passes. Hanley, good handoff. Beats two men, very powerful man. He's not a giant in stature or size by any means, Henry Hanley, but he manages to get through. That's a good kick. The pressure's on Belcher. Oh, that's a good tackle. Superb tackle there by Martin O'Fire. He got him very, very quick, and Belcher's saying to his pack, come on, let's get you here. That was a great catch from Gary Belcher, but I think the, the biggest problem with the Great Britain chase was they had to have their eyes on the football. And, uh, you know, they had to contest the ball in the air. Instead, they all went for the tackle. If a few of the Great Britain heads would have been up looking at the football, that was what they had to do, contest the ball in the air, not make the tackle. And uh, Martin O'Fire there, I think he felt there was a chance, but it, uh, it wasn't there. And there is... Uh, Number two, Michael Hancock, coming away, shrugs off Gibson, loses the ball, but a fire just couldn't pick it up. But it's Australia coming away here now, Meninga back inside to Hancock. And again, a good tackling stint from this lead centre, Carl Gibson. Hancock and Gibson, a little bit of fisticuffs. That's a penalty again on the very early tackles from uh, Paul Eastwood. He's come in late there in the tackle. And, uh, you know... Uh, it's his first big game, I think, and he, he's very nervous, as we've seen with his goal picking. And there is one man who obviously isn't nervous, played all over the world. Malmeninga, the strapping on his left arm, had that arm broken three times, but still came back. Just over five minutes in this... Uh, first half, just that one goal in the 22nd minute from Paul Eastwood, two points to nil for Great Britain but these Australian forwards charging down that's better from Australia, Karen Walters back to Langer, Langer distributing, directing with Stewart, that's a good break from Stewart can't get the ball away to Meninga, I'm sure he'll charge at the players an awesome sight in the centre and the sixth tackle. Looking for Langer to launch the ball. He does do. Oh, that will come down with snow. Oh, magnificently taken by Hansen. And he still goes. Well, he does a lot of work on the trampoline, this lad, to aid his spring in the air. Well, it's a penalty against Hansen. Well, the referee was on the spot, but for the life of me, I can't see that at I think Hampson was aggrieved. You think he felt that he was being held down? But I think the referee, John, was insisting that Hampson just kept his legs down. Well, I've, I've coached players in Australia, Brett Kenny, Peter Sterling, all the great players in Australia. There's, there's not a player that can catch a high ball as good as Steve Hampson. It's his strength. He's a fantastic player. Now, what's happened here, he's overplayed the... He's overplayed the, the tackle on the ground. He's kicked out with his legs, and as we saw with Sirenen, he's been penalised for kicking out in the tackle. So, you know, it's, it's another mistake from, from Great Britain on the first tackle inside their 22. And when you make those sort of mistakes, uh, usually two points. So, Steve Hampson blotting his copybook after that magnificent catch from Alan Langer. 
and giving Malmeninga the chance to make matters level at two points each. Australia really not having a goal kicker to match their other talents on this tour. Just kicked 18 goals out of five matches to 33 tries. Not a very good average. That's going in, off the post, hits the upright. So Australia claw two points back. Just three minutes left in this first half. And delighted last for those Australian supporters. 5,000 of them have travelled over here to give support to Meninga. His two points, Great Britain two, Australia two. Well, it's a great kick from Mal. He's, uh, he's in in different form with his kicking. I mean, sometimes in front of the goalpost, he takes three steps back. Other times out wider, he takes six steps back. He mixes it up, and he's, he's mixed his success rate up as well. But uh, it's two points, two points each, and uh, it's a great game of rugby league. Ashes test match is always hard. Often a little dour. We've got 103 test matches between these two nations and Great Britain just edging 150, Australia 48 and four of them drawn and they're drawing at the moment, two points each very finely balanced Australia of course dominated World Rugby League for the past 20 years and here's one man who has Meninga coming away, that's a good ball now to McGaw, but a good tackle by Paul Eastwood good cover tackle by Eastwood but Australia now beginning to put their game together, Langer that's not a good pass. That's a good pass to Wettingshausen. But well held by a, by a fire. Good tackle. Interesting to see Wettingshausen switch to the right wing to mark uh, a fire. Yeah, he's got a little bit more experience than Hancock, and uh, Hancock's more of a power runner where, where, uh, where Wettinghausen is... Uh, he's a speed man. He could... Uh, I don't, don't think anybody can match up with speed with a fire, but... That's got a better chance. Touch. Eastwood and Hampson just getting in each other's way. This could be just the chance that Australia's looking for. It's a, it's a ball that Hampson's taken into touch, so it's an Australia feed. There's a minute to go in the game, and uh, Australia's attacking inside the Great Britain 22. This will be a very, very tough six tackles for Australia. And this is very often, John, the danger area, isn't it? The one minute before half-time, when people are a little tired, they just relax. And is that a heel against the head? It is, yes. Huge roars around this Wembley Stadium. And if ever Lee Jackson was going to strike a ball, that was it. And offside. So, a good heel from Lee Jackson there. We don't see many heels against the head these days. No, well, from the Australian point of view, Ray, it's, uh, it was a very poor feed from uh, Alan Langer. He didn't wait until the packs were ready and uh, the way the feeds are going the, the feeds and the, the scrum win are going together so it was a very poor feed from the number seven from Australia so Paul Eastwood also from Hull retrieving the ball into injury time Paul Dixon coming away I'm sure Great Britain know we're coming into injury time they know they want to get this ball down to that Australian line and there is the the whistle, Monsieur Sablerol calls time. A hard 40 minutes, an interesting 40 minutes, and I'm sure Mal Reilly really will be very, very happy with that scoreline. A Great Britain to Australia to a lot of tackling from Great Britain, but equally so, a lot of tackling from Australia. And these Australian forwards, big, powerful, and strong, but they've been committed deep into their own half. Haven't been the force and the threatening potential that we've seen in the club game so far but a long long way to go yet great britain two australia two and john i think a first class performance from great britain well it was it was a good performance from both sides there was a lot of mistakes but uh you know it's a good game of rugby league both sides are trying very hard australia seem to be advancing the ball a lot uh, a lot easier than great britain but like we say we've got two all score line and, and uh, 40 minutes of, of entertaining rugby league in front of us both sides losing possession, John, at the vital stage. Well, they, they do, but... Uh, 
Marali, you must be very pleased with the way your players have performed in the first half. Yes, a big commitment. We're subjecting them to good pressure and it's paying off and they're making mistakes. You're proving that the great British boys can, can really take these Australians on. It's only 40 minutes gone. There's another 40 minutes left. And if we can maintain that pressure and take the opportunities we've created, I think we can uh, just maybe slip in. Finally, what will you say to your players now? Well, I think uh, I'm going to uh, consolidate them as far as uh, we've been doing the right thing tactically. tactically we, we, we're sound. Defence has been good. I think there's one or two uh, problems down the rook areas with holding off them. But uh, if we if we create as much chances in the second half as the first half, and I feel we might take one or two. Mal, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Des, and uh, certainly I think these. Uh, Great Britain lads will be fired up. An interesting tactical game. Great Britain, as John Gallagher said, has contained Australia, but of course, any tour inside always come very strongly in that final quarter. They have the advantage of training twice a day on tour. We'll see. But of course, any Maurini coach side's a very fit one. But they don't come much fitter than these lads. As John Gallagher indicated, at Leeds and also at St Helens and Wigan and, and against Cumbria. In that final 20 minutes, that's when the game really swung away from the British sides. And that's the time when Australia should have that advantage. I think Great Britain, uh, John, will be looking to be in that lead by the last 20 minutes. Well, if nothing happens in the up until the last 20 minutes, it'll be, uh, it'll be a coach's decision. Do they, uh, do they throw the subs on or, um, you know, sometimes in those situations uh, taking no risk is, is the biggest risk. And here we have the substitutes, John, under the new international law, four subs now allowed on the pitch. That really should be uh, should provide with some crucial decisions in this 40 minutes. Well, it will. If the, if the coaches decide to uh, take a risk, it's, uh, you've just got to wait and see how things pan out. Usually we see a couple of fours will be replaced first, so... The chances of Kevin Ward getting into the game after 20 minutes are probably great. The same with Lazarus on the uh, Australian side. I'm sure both uh, Maurice Lindsay, the manager, and... Uh, well, it looks as if Malreen is having a word with Kevin Ward now, but, of course, the danger is, uh, Mal, that once you've put a substitute on, he can't come back off again. Well, you can't have it both ways. The British rule is different. We can, uh, we can interchange with two subs. International rules, there's four subs, and once you're on, you're on, and then that's it. If you're replaced, you take no more part in the game. So, 40 minutes to go. First Ashes test. Australia 2, Great Britain 2. Just a goal apiece, Mal Meninga and Paul Eastwood. And Great Britain, I'm sure, will be looking to get away as far away from this 25-yard line as they possibly can. Lee Jackson there was left a little bit high and dry. I think he was looking for the kicker, and the kicker wasn't quite there. There is the kicker now. Well, it's not. It's Paul Dixon isolated. Little bit of a misunderstanding there. To Eastwood. Well, that's one of the problems with bringing Eastwood in from the wing to have the kick. He was very hard to find then, and uh, the Great Britain dummy half couldn't find him. Schofield probably would have been a better option to jump in there and take the kick. Andrew Ettingshausen there with the ball. Langer, good long ball to Stewart, and even longer ball to Mal Meninga. Launching Meninga on the outside to Belcher. But not going anywhere. Gary Belcher wanted number 13 there for Australia. Bobby Lindner to come inside him. On again, let it go! Get up, ball! Come on, get up! Get up and play! Good shot, ball there. Langer. Good ball to Stewart. Powerful lad, this 20-year-old. Now then, will we see Anna Langer launch another one of those high bomb specials? No, they decide to run it. I don't think Australia realised that this is the sixth tackle. Good run from Linda. Here's a chance now. Meninga pounding for the line. Oh, superbly held by Dennis Betts. I think uh, Australia taking Great Britain by surprise there, John, by running the ball. Well, it's a great tactic to run the ball on the sixth tackle, especially if you do have good field position. It's uh, catch it. The opposition tend not to come up as much, and they're waiting for the kick. They drop a few players back, and it's a very good tactic to run the ball on the sixth tackle if you do have good field position. And Schofield again kicking the ball, but Australia 
They're judged offside again. That's the sixth time Australia have been caught offside yet. Well, I mentioned earlier about Australia moving up good in defence, and uh, the referees catching them jumping a little bit early, and that uh, that is a great penalty for Great Britain because it came on the sixth tackle, and Schofield had already put a pretty poor kick in, and uh, now they have they have six tackles to go. So yeah. here's Australia running the ball on the sixth tackle when I. The Great Britain winger had dropped back, the fullback was back, and, uh, you know, it was a great chance. It was a scoring opportunity. So, Paul Eastwood, left-footed, puts the touch. A good kick, too, gains Great Britain, 35, 40 yards. And a sense of urgency there about Lee Jackson, the short ball to Dixon. Great Britain, of course, won the... Last Ashes test between these two sides in Sydney in 88, 26 points to 12. But they came into this test, the underdogs, all oh, good break there from Little Gregory. He can't get away, his little legs scuttering away. Schofield. Hanley. Oh, good break from Hanley. The ship kick, can he take it himself? Oh, good tackle there by Hancock. Here she's short for Great Britain on the line. Eastwood, he's over! Yes! Superb effort from Paul Eastwood. That took some sheer force. That took size and strength. And look at Dr. Paul McKenzie there. Normally the most shy and phlegmatic of them. He's on his feet. And these Great Britain supporters possibly sense that something important is happening for British rugby here. Good try for this whole youngster. Great Britain then in the lead, six points to two. But it all came, John, didn't it, for that Ellery Hanley run? Well, Ellery Hanley's just proved here he's the best player in the world. He's in form, he's had a break, he's, uh, he's taken the Australian side on, kicked ahead, regathered himself, and from a very, very good play, the ball, the ball's moved wide, and uh, it's a four-pointer. It's a great try. Well, you know, John, I thought that Great Britain had gone wrong here, but it just shows you the strength and the power of Hanley. But when uh, Donald Powell switched the ball to the right, I thought to myself, well, there are three or four green in Goldman, but just look at the power of Paul Eastwood there. Well, it was a great try, and uh, it, it came through the pressure of getting the penalty on the six tackle, so they had a good six, and then they got down into the... Australia conceded another 40 metres with a good, good line kick, uh, more pressure... So they had to defend for 12 tackles in a row. One-on-one -on -one situation, Ellery Hanley just killed them. And just listen to the roars from this record crowd here at Wembley, urging these lads on. Now then, can Paul Eastwood put this kick over? Just inside that 25-yard line, 12 yards in. Hardly any wind down there on the pitch. A strong wind blowing up top, but not much on the pitch. He comes in. No, it's not there. So, six minutes gone. Six points to two for Great Britain, but Paul Eastwood just not quite got his kicking boots on. And I think here coming on the field now, a huge psychological move by Mulvaney. Kevin Ward, the forward of the 1988 series, Determined to get into the action. St. Helens prop forward. And Hampson. Catching the ball beautifully, John, isn't he? Yeah, he's a great player with the ball in the air, but let's just give a little bit of credit, too, to the, the Great Britain winger, Paul Eastwood. He did everything he had to do on that try. He got down very low, he was very determined, and uh, he got the ball over the line. Great work. And Bird is a determined man, Kevin Ward. Resurrecting his test career here. Gregory, not the best of kicks. Straight down Hancock's throat. But a good tackle from Dennis Betts. This young Wigan, 21 years old, second row, offside. I think uh, Great Britain, uh, John, caught offside there, will fire on the flanks. The two wings are coming in very, very quickly on the outsides to stop Australia moving it out wide, aren't they? 
Well, they certainly are, but the, the players have got to have enough common sense where they must look at the referee. It's no good thinking you're back five. I mean, once you glance across at the referee, you know you're that one step in front of him. So they must look at the referee, and uh, you know, here we have Australia in a good attacking position. And a vital time, I think, John, the number of times on this tour I've seen Australia go a try down and then suddenly come back within 30 seconds. Well, it's a, it's a great hit back if you can hit back that quickly, but uh, the Great Britain side, they're tackling very well and so far so good. A short ball to Roach. Having all and Meninga's powering through. He's only got Hampson to stop. He can't stop him. But Lee Jackson did and Nicola Gregory. Six yards now from this Great Britain line. That's a good switch. Langer, they've got three to two. Little Langer's going himself to Roach. Hampson again, Hanley holding him up. Desperation stakes here now for Great Britain. The fire coming in out wide on the outside. The ball's out to Linda. That's his house. Oh, no, magnificent tackle. A magnificent tackle there. By Gary Schofield. Helped by Kevin Ward and Carl Gibson. And Australia almost in. What you've got to do in those situations is just Great Britain have got to do the numbers. They didn't have enough numbers out on this side, and, and Australia picked that. And with an overlap, they uh, moved the ball quickly, quickly to Eddinghausen. But everybody scrambled in defence, and the cover was great. Good play. But what a vital tackle there from Carl Gibson, the lead centre, John. It was a great tackle, and uh, here we see Elry. He's just got away again. Just look at this. Give He's got Martin, Martin on fire. fire. Back to Elry Hanley. Now then, to Schofield. Oh! Ellery's delayed, he had a 5-1 to one overlap, the ball should have gone out, and he's injured. For once in his life, well, the referee insisted that the game go on, Ellery Hanley looks to have had a very bad knock on the chest, Kevin Ward driving in. Well, Ellery got in the clear, and uh, with Gary Schofield, he needed, he needed to pass the ball and support player. He's got a split second to make that decision, though, and uh, it was a very good tackle. He's a tough guy, or he'll be up and back into it in a minute. And Hanley now back into the fray, but surely a possible opportunity has gone there, but it's Great Britain now on the attack, looking confident. Paul Dixon, that slip once again in the turf. It's very, very damp. Schofield, attempted drop. It's a long one. Belcher, he's got to play this. The fire to mark him. And suddenly, suddenly, John, I think this game's gone up 10 or 12 notches, hasn't it? Well, it has, because Australia is starting to come a little bit desperate. And uh, when, when they get desperate, they can do things. A magnificent run there from Lindner to Belcher. Now then, this lad Belcher's got real pace. We've got Hanley coming across. That's his housing. But just look at the British lads there. One, two, three, four, five. Well, that should have been a try, but superb defence, and the gaps are coming now, the tries are coming, Australia, the long ball to Cartwright, they've got a 3 to one over up here, Mark the ball, he gets it to Mal Meninga, he's going for the corner himself, Meninga's in, yes, he's in at the corner, the pressure was on Great Britain, Meninga went for the line himself, Great Britain 6, Australia 6, and suddenly now, there's something there for those kangaroo supporters to shout and to cheer at. This is a test match. Wonderful handling there. Well, the ball quickly went to Meninga, uh, to uh, Magor after they'd made the break down the other sideline, and Meninga didn't really have anybody to beat over here. Uh, you know, he had somebody coming across. Schofield picked him up very, very late, and... Uh, Big Mal just scored in the corner, but they didn't have the numbers. You've got to have the numbers in this game against this Australian side. And here it is again, it's that powerful run, good pass there from McGaw, and Meninga weighs everything up, puts his head back, he says, I'm going, he says, I'll take Schofield over with me, and he does. Well, the thing the Australian wingers do, they run some great angles, and what that does to the cover, once those wingers peel off the sidelines infield, it makes the cover, it freezes the defence a little bit, and the cover just has to balk that little bit, and Meninga had a straight out run to the, to the corner post. So, six points each. Mal Meninga, the scorer of the try, with this kick from the touchline. 
bathed in sunshine here now at Wembley. The sort of scene reminiscent of our Challenge Cup finals at the back end of April. And I think now the sort of tension and the sort of action that we're accustomed to test matches between these two great nations. Meninga lofts it high. No. Great Britain six, Australia six. Well, on the replay, we can see Andy Gregory was out wide. Steve Hampson had come in to do the job, but the wing appealing inside just held the uh, defence off him a little bit, and Schofield didn't have the pace to pick him up before the corner. Gary Schofield then to, to restart. He'll be looking for a long one. But he finds Gary Belcher. Sediment powering through now, but a good tackle from Ellery Hanley. I think we've complimented Hanley, John, on his uh, attack, but he's certainly putting the tackles in as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's a great defending, de defensive player. I mean, I, I don't have any doubt in my mind that he is the best player in the world. Kenneth Walters to Roach. Great Britain, of course, cannot relax. One mistake could see these green and gold kangaroos sweeping through. That's a good kick from Stewart. That's a tester. Depends on the bounce. Now, who's taking it? Paul Eastwood. I think both Eastwood and uh, Steve Hampson had a little bit of trouble with the sun there, John. Well, they did a trying into that corner, but Hampson didn't do real well. He didn't, didn't support Paul Eastwood after Paul Eastwood picked the ball up. So, uh, you know, you've got to support each other in this game. And uh, But... Again, Great Britain get another penalty and, uh, you know, it takes, does take the pressure off again. That's right. And as you say, John, Australia not daring to risk a kick to the Martin O'Fire, are they? No, well, that's a, you just don't kick the ball in that direction. I mean, it's a, you don't have to be real smart to work out that you don't kick the ball to Martin O'Fire. Gregory. Kevin Ward launching himself. But again, a powerful tackle from John Carr right there. Carl Harrison had a very satisfactory debut this lad from Hull. Schofield looking for the run around, finds Betts. Great Britain looking to launch the speed of this lad, Dennis Betts, possibly a little bit out wider than that. Good run from Jackson. I think what's going to happen now, we'll see that both teams starting to work a little bit more from dummy half. And, uh, you know, there's a bit of space there. And when the sting goes out of the game, the dummy halves get a little bit more freedom. And, the Australian number nine, uh, Kerrod Walters, he'll have to be watched very, very closely. Good run from Schofield, and of course, another six tackles for Great Britain on the attack now, Gregory. Look at Gregory now, suddenly beginning to find the gaps, his legs begin to tire. Dennis Betts going for the line. Oh, he's just a yard short. Good defence there from Australia to Gregory. Looks for the long ball. It's a bad ball. Well saved by Stevie Hampson. And the six tackle. What's the fire going to do? Will he kick this and chase himself? No. Hanley will. That's well placed. Belch is underneath it. He's lost it. The fire's over. The fire's over. And a try. Gary Belcher lost the ball. Martin of fire. Shot him there like a bullet. He picked the ball up, he's over for a try, and rugby league's most prolific try scorer sets those fans in absolute delight. Great Britain in the lead, ten points to six, and here he is, the witness flyer, Martin O'Fire. Magnificent effort. OK, the ball goes to Elry Hanley. You've never never been able to kick a ball too high in this game, and Elry certainly puts it up. The pressure's great on the fullback. There's a head up there. The ball comes down. The one thing you can know that's going to happen in the game of rugby league, Martin O'Fire will score a try, and he was on hand. You were saying earlier on, uh, John, that you wanted Martin O'Fire to come uh, in midfield. Well, he certainly spotted his chance here, and it was real pace. That's the Just pace. Just watching swoop. 
Bertie Uri with his head up looking at the ball and they, you know, he contested the ball so it was a fair challenge on the fullback. Yeah. And uh, that's what you need. You, you've got to go up for the ball, get a fair challenge on the fullback and anything can happen. And all Great Britain will be hoping that Paul Eastwood can put this over. It looks an easy kick, but there are no easy kicks at Wembley. A crescendo of noise around here now at this famous stadium. And this poor lad, all the pressure on him. Looking for the two points that will give Great Britain that vital six points lead. In he comes. And he gets it. The roars that greet it. 12 points to six for Great Britain. 18 minutes gone. Can Great Britain John hold out for these next 22? Well, I don't think it's a matter of holding out. They've just got to keep playing the way they're playing. They don't have to try and defend that lead. They've got to keep attacking the way they have. And it was, uh, it, it was pleasing to see Paul kick that goal because he's been under a little bit of pressure. He's played particularly well. But it's a great goal kick and it'll do his confidence a lot of good. And there he is again. He's looking for the ball. He takes it. He's certainly giving them problems out wide there. Paul Dixon and these Great Britain forwards now wanting the ball every one of them Schofield to Kevin Ward back to Schofield tried the dummy kick but didn't work but for Gregory Gregory really and Schofield and a little flat to get this kick in. This is better from Eastwood. That's a good kick, sending Belcher back. And just look there now, six Great Britain men lined up there. They've got to keep Etchingshausen down here, and they do do. That's the value of the chasers, John, isn't it? Yeah, the kick is only as good as the chase, and that was a good chase. They got down there, they got to... Uh... They got the Belcher as quickly as possible, and then uh, Eddie has they put them both under a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure now on this circle. Uh, Great Britain moving in and roared on by this 52,274 crowd, the biggest ever crowd in the history of Test rugby in Great Britain. Good tackle again. And notice that Great Britain have just pulled Gary Schofield out of the defensive line and they're playing him a sweeper roll to cover against the chip kick, but often that can lead to, uh, to, to mistakes and lead, lead to breaks down the middle of the park. And we just saw one there, John. Mark yep. McGaw coming through. The sixth tackle coming up. Ricky Stewart electing to run it. And he puts the, the chip kick in. There's the sweeper. Well, it worked then, John, didn't it? Well, once, a, once Great Britain get ahead like that, Australia's got to try something, and the obvious thing that you do, Trey, you've got to break them up a little bit, you've got to try and break the defence down, and uh, the chip's on, so tactically, whether Schofield read it or whether the coach sitting on the sideline read it, you know, it was a good... it, it was the right, the right thing done. I think uh, Paul Eastwood had a knock to the head there, but, of course, in rugby league, the game continues, except for a very serious injury. holding down there good decision there from uh, Monsieur Sable like Not I said earlier if there's one thing in rugby league that you know is going to happen Martin O'Fire is going to score a try and Steve Roach really is going to give away a penalty and we've just seen a silly penalty given away by Roach and offside again now then is it worth going for a kick at goal I think Andy Gregory's Shouting to Ellery Hanley. Ellery Hanley was going for the quick tap. Is it worth it? I mean, although Eastwood has not been on top form kicking, but I've seen him kick some superb efforts. What do you think, John? Would you go for goal or would you put it into the corner? No, I think it's I think the right decision. I think I'd kick it out and keep the pressure on and go for the it's a long way out. There's a very big pitch. It's a long pitch. Fair enough, John, you would have coach. Jackson. Dixon, and suddenly all these Great Britain forwards want to be in on the act, leading 12 points to six. Carl Harrison, 
And not for a long time have we seen the pressure on these Australian forwards like this. Schofield to Gregory. Look at Gregory trying to get through, gets it to Hanley. And I wouldn't be surprised John to see a drop kick. No, the one point's very valuable. That would have been a very valuable one pointer that Gregory attempted. And that it is. It's there. That's good thinking. That's good play. 13 points to six now. The magical six-point difference. Australia now got to score twice. Excellent kick from Schofield. He was under a lot of pressure too, Schofield, and, uh, you know, he was cool under pressure. They came from everywhere. It was a great goal under pressure. And didn't he position himself well yeah, uh, here, John? He had John? a lot of pressure and a lot of players coming at him. It looked like there could have been a hand there, but the referee said play on. In fact, I think uh, Roach was trying to signify that it was a hand. The but referee said no, and he's the boss. The one point counts. Gibson. What a good game Carl Gibson's had, especially in defence. Just less than 17 minutes to go in this first British call Ashes test. Great Britain leading, 13 points to six. Schofield again dictating matters, directing matters with the kicks. Hancock. And again, the chasers. But this is the period when Australia should be coming strongly. They are the tourists, they're training twice a day. Owen Meninga throws him off. That's a bad miss. Belcher, he's got pace on the outside, he can get away. But he can't. Once again, a good tackle by Carl Gibson. McGaw, 15 stone centre, racing on. Gregory's missed him. But look who's there again. Oh, Gibson's missed him. He's going for the line. It's a try. I just spoke about Australia's fitness and strength coming back into this game. And he took 15 stone Mark McGaw, the Camilla centre. Had experience with Leeds to haul the Kangaroos back into this test match. 13 points to 10. Mark McGaw hit that ball great on the advantage line, like we like the front rowers to do it. There's a missed tackle there from Andy Gregory, but he should have been wrapped up here. Gibson came, Hampson came. They bumped each other, each other out of the way, and uh, McGaw had the presence of mind to get up and go again, but he showed great balance and uh, very good timing. Very good timing here at the play the ball, where he blows onto the ball like a front rower would. Here's a tackle here from Gregory, which he, he gets one leg, slows him down. Gibson and Hampson there to finish the job off, but uh, he's just too strong, too big and too strong. It was a great try. And if anything, John, this has been the tale of this afternoon with the Australians. It's not been the forwards really have done the damage, it's been the two centres, both uh, 15, 16 stone apiece. McGaw here on the right-hand side, and we saw Meninga earlier on on the left-hand side. But I do think Johnny should have been stopped. Yeah, well, the tackle was there to be made, and, you know, really, it was good good play from McGaw to score the try, but, uh, you know, it was a great bit and error that, that let the try in. The uh, the value of those backs coming in around the ruck area, though, once uh, the sting's gone out of the play, is, is you've seen the benefit of it there. You know, you, they're big, they're fast, and if they can get in around the ruck, they can do some damage. And the kick from Meninga, it goes through, straight and true. So suddenly, just the one point difference. 13 points to 12 now for Great Britain. Meninga finding his kicking boots in this test. Playing a captain's part. 13 points to 12 for Great Britain. And this match delicately poised again. It looked as if Australia were going behind. It's McGaw just hitting the ball great, great on the advantage line. There's a missed tackle there, but... He's a very fast player, he's kicked out of that tackle. This is where the tackle should have been stopped. Good balance, good presence of mind. He's got up, he's gone again, and he's too fast. It was a great try. And I think now, John, this is going to be a test of uh, kicking ability. Both sides have really got to contain the other side in their 25 yard area, haven't they? Well, it's a little bit of a catch-22, though. Great Britain can't afford to kick the ball on the second, third or fourth tackle to... Uh, 
to give Australia too much ball. So they must kick the ball, but they've got to do it at the right time. So just 13 minutes left then here at Wembley, and this this really is the danger zone for Great Britain. This is when the kangaroos are accustomed to to power in. Oh, could Stevie Hansen have launched uh, Martin O'Fire there? O'Fire going himself. Now then, he's looking for space. Can't find it. To Betts. Jackson, that's good play amongst the forwards. Betts and Jackson combining well. Schofield. Good play by Langer there, not making the tackle, but cutting off Schofield's option, stopped him from passing. They're just starting to go down the middle a bit, Ray, and, you know, if you can make a break down the middle, the next person you come to is usually the fullback. so... Greg's just taking a risk there with a the long ball, but there's something on here. Well, I think Andy Gregory expected to find Martin a fire with that long pass, but Martin had come inside. Well, that's a, you know, you can't have everybody where you want them. We're just talking about Martin being being more involved, getting into the play. So one of the one of the problems you have is that when, when you look out there, he's not there. And Australia bringing these big forwards down again. Bella. Ah, Great Britain beginning to tire. There'll be some very tired arms, some very tired legs moving up there. Especially from tackling this big man, number eight, Steve Roach. The Balmain blocker, as they call him. Ooh, that was almost an interception. Linda made some good runs out wide here. A fire. That's his housing. He's got space on the outside. Can he beat Schofield? He doesn't. On the sixth tackle. Great Britain have got to hang on here. Stewart is going to put a high ball up. Oh, that's a perfect kick. Oh, magnificently taken by Hampson. Well, John, that was a catch and a half. You'd never see a better catch in rugby league. I mean, he was running away from the catch. I mean, he had a little bit of interference there by the winger. There was good communication from the winger and the fullback, and uh, you'd never see a better catch in any code. Betts. And he took that ball in the sun. So, Great Britain in possession to Kevin Ward. Great Britain just used the one substitution so far. Kevin Ward, I think thoughts must be going through Malwili's mind. Do I bring fresh men on at this stage? Bet. Schofield, now then, can he get the bounce? Oh, he's got Gallipola with him. Out to Eastwood. Is Paul Eastwood in the corner? He is. Oh, a try from absolutely nothing. Gary Schofield put the chip kick in. Up pop Gallipola. And Paul Eastwood was in at the corner. They spread that ball wide. The spectators here are going wild. And a commentator, I think, as well. But John, that was a superb effort, wasn't it? It was fantastic, we saw it. I mean, the kids really killed him on the wing. He's going to be under a lot of pressure here with the goal kick, but... Uh... No doubt about it. Just watch Schofield here. The little chip kick. He's fame for it. Now then, he gets the bounce. He looks either side. Darrell Powell from Sheffield Eagles races alongside. And just look how he moves. That's superb play. Eastwood, this needs strength. This needs pace. He's in. No sweeper in the Australian side where we saw England drop their sweeper back. Schofield's done exactly the right thing. Drawn the fullback, put Powell in the clear. Now, Powell had to make a decision here. Short ball or a long ball to the winger. Correct decision. The kid does great here. He gets down low. He goes in hard. And uh, it's a great try for Great Britain. Fantastic play. And I think one thing that we should see here is Andrew Etchinshausen coming across here. This is what causes Darrell Powell to step out wide. Here's Etchinghausen coming in, the pass perfectly timed, and Paul Eastwood, you know, he's up against the strong man in Hancock. He's got to go in for that try. Well, he is, but you've got to give the Australian defence a little bit of credit there. Both, both wingers were involved, and, uh, you know, a great try from Paul Eastwood. And can Paul Eastwood earn further glory by putting this ball over from the touchline? 
17 points to 12, of course, just a five-point difference. A try and a goal, and Australia could still win the Test match. He might never kick a more important goal. In his life. In his life. This will be the kid's biggest kick of, the, of his whole career. Right so, here. Here it is. This youngster from Humberside. From the touchline. He strikes it, but no, it's not got the room. It's not there. So still that tantalising five points difference. 17 points to 12. And uh, there it is again, Gary Schofield, the chip, chip kick, kick. times it to perfection, but superb play here from uh, the Sheffield Eagles centre, out to Eastwood, and it's not a formality, he has to work for that. And Great Britain slipped on substitute Carl Furbank for Carl Harrison there, I think a good move. A fit man on at this time to take the pressure off. And Australia also slipped on Des Hasler and Ben Lazarus. Significantly two forwards for Cartwright and Ricky Stewart. Six and a half minutes to go here. Six and a half minutes, possibly, of glory for Great Britain or disaster. Schofield again. Oh! It's a chase. Hasler's going for it. Hampson. He's got to get over that line. He doesn't. Well, that's a drop out beneath the post. A slap kick there from Gary Schofield. Just a chance. And it looks like Alexander to come on, Greg Alexander, a pacey lad, a quick lad from the Penrith club. Now, Great Britain want a very long, a very deep ball here. They can't afford Australia with six tackles in this 25-yard area. Schofield, it's not a good kick, not a good kick at all, picked up by Belcher. Sensibly laid to Etienne with a bit of pace. Australia with five tackles to make here, the fresh man coming on there, number 15, Glenn Lazarus, driving to that Great Britain line, 20 yards to go, Langer moves it now, left to right, Meninga, that's a good ball to Belcher, they've got to put him into touch, and they do so, they do, Mark McGaws, 15 stone for once, not holding him up, this should be Great Britain's head and ball, Well, it, he didn't really have enough room to get down that sideline, and there was only one place he was going to end up, and that was over the sideline, so it was poor play Australia. Just over five minutes to go, Gregory to feed. He gets the ball, Hanley comes away. And a good run from Hanley. Oh, what a powerful run at this stage. When you think he's gone 75 minutes of a test match and he can still come away from the loose forward position, Darrell Powell. Schofield, Carl Furbank, first touch of the ball, this Bradford Northern forward. Had a good tour in New Zealand. People around the ground whistling away, but there's still plenty of time to go. Eastwood again. Powerful, strong, oh, he still keeps going. He's driving down the middle. What a run this young lad's had. What a test match here at Wembley. Gregory, pass. This is Great Britain at their best. Ellery Hanley, who puts the kick in. Oh, is he obstructed? Yes, he is. It's going to be a penalty. It's a penalty. Now then, what will Great Britain do? Will they play this ball? Or will they go for goal, John? It's a bit far out for goal, isn't it? But two points could seal it. Well, it's another great break from Ellery, but, uh, you know, it was, on, it was late the tackle count and uh, Australia expected to kick earlier. Ellery's kicked the ball, he was taken out after he kicked the ball, so it's a fair penalty. They've just got a very big decision to make here. And uh, probably the correct decision is to take the two points, go for the two points. Well, we can see 
Australia's Ettingshausen here, he kicks the ball out in uh, despair. Three minutes left, and correctly, I think, going for goal. I think the point as well, uh, John, is that it will take 60 seconds to take the goal, won't it? Yeah, there's a time factor involved now, and, uh, you know, like you say, the 60 seconds tick away, a couple of minutes to play in the game, and Great Britain will get the ball back from the restart. Yes. And uh, it was significant, uh, Mr. Savile all indicating and pointing to his watch. You think he said to Paul Eastwood, don't take too long over this? Well, I'm sure he did, but I think the most important thing about this kick is that, that, that uh, the ball is kicked hard. It's either got to go dead or the Great Britain chase has got to be that good that they pin Australia in the end goal. They can't give Australia a chance to get out of the end goal if they expect to win the game. It's, uh, it's got to be a great kick and it's got to be a great chase. And surely... If Paul Eastwood were to whip, kick this ball with two minutes left in this first test match, I could not see anything stopping Great Britain. They were the underdogs, all the betting, all the big money was on Australia. They've roared through Great Britain in their previous matches. And who knows, could they come unstuck here? Paul Eastwood. A vital kick in his career. Oh, it's a good one. It's a magnificent effort from Paul Eastwood. Off the touchline. And surely that kick with two minutes to go. And the score at 19 points to 12. Has surely won Great Britain this test match, John. It certainly has. It was a great kick from the sideline. He's been one of the best players on the field. So, you know, I'm glad, glad for the player's sake that he has kicked the goal. He's had a great, uh, great debut for Great Britain. Two minutes to go, uh, Great Britain should wrap this test match up, and it's a, a great shot in the arm for the game in Great Britain. And did it hit the post, John? It just seemed to glance the post as it went in, but I don't think anybody will be bothered. Nicola Gregory picks the ball up. Roars all around this stadium. And the touch judge is on. I think uh, Gregory has been hit. Mr John Easter, the... Touch judge is signifying that Paul Silliman has struck Andy Gregory. Yes. I think a little frustration there on, on Silliman's part. Well, they tried a short kick off which didn't work. Andy Gregory ran the ball straight into the opposition. Paul Silliman, uh, you know, he, he, he gave him a workout on the ground, gave his face a massage and deserve to be penalised. That just about hands the game to Great Britain. It's all over. To Dixon, Paul Dixon, he's done the graft. He's done the hard work. All this pack have had to work hard against these Australian giants. Australia unbeaten in 37 matches, stretching back to 1978. And here, that proud record's going to go, and here's Great Britain again. Dennis Betts just tackled. Twelve years since the Union Jack was hoisted. And there's Hanley, the man of the match. But I think there are 13 heroes here, and I think Ellery Hanley, the official man of the match, would agree with me. Or 14 heroes with Kevin Ward. How many times have we seen this man Hanley dominate here at Wembley? He relishes the big occasion. And that's a good push from the Great Britain pack to Greg Alexander. McGaw. These Great Britain lads now are like terriers. And there's the hooter. The roars from the crowd. Sheer ecstasy on this Great Britain side. The smile on Kevin Ward. At last, they say Great Britain have done it. They've waited long. They've waited a long, long time for this. For Fire and Hanley, sheer delight. 37 consecutive victories from Australia in Great Britain. 47 if we include 10 matches in France. And the green and gold finally have to bow under. They were the red-hot favourites to take this test.
but third it is raised aloft, the proud lion. Roy Powell did so much to contain the Australian pack in the first half. And that 52,000 crowd who supported them. And I'm sure there'll not be a ticket available for Old Trafford in a couple of weeks' time. As Great Britain go around and John, a victory celebration that's really deserved. Oh, well, they deserved it. It was a great, it was a great boost for the game in Great Britain. They were a great side. Uh, a lot of credit's got to go to Malcolm Riley. He's done a good job with the side. And uh, Andy Gregory told me yesterday they'd had a great week in preparation. Uh, they tried to cover everything they could. And, uh, you know, they deserve the victory. It's a fantastic day for English Rugby League. There are a few of us who remember that second test victory in 1978. Steve Hampson was probably a little bit young then, but he's doing the victory rolls. It's 12 years ago since we beat Australia in a test match in this country. But just like the underdogs then, we've won now 19 points to 12 for Great Britain. I well remember the happiness on those faces back in 1988 and dare I say John or Australia on the slide two defeats in two matches I don't think they're on the slide I mean it, it was a great game of rugby league and uh, I, I think the, the third test match in Australia that Great Britain won after Australia wrapped up the series I don't think there was yeah, if you're going to win a test match that's the one to win but to come out and win the first test match of a series it's been a, it's a great victory yeah and especially when we think all the talk in midweek, uh, John, was of players who were injured and couldn't take part in this test. Ah, oh, well, it's always good to come into these games, the underdog, when people write you off and say you can't do it. Gives the players extra incentive to prove that they can do it. And, you know, I'm particularly happy for Andy Gregory. He's been to uh, Wembley on about seven occasions, never been beaten here. And he told me yesterday he didn't intend to, intend to be beaten here again today. So uh, his undefeated record at uh, Wembley is intact. It certainly is, and uh, there's no doubt about it, he was confident. But uh, there's the man, the skipper, Ellery Handy. What a game he's had. Now, many congratulations. What a fantastic performance. Yes, the boys uh, full credit to them. They worked very hard. Very intense game, and they maintained it for the full 80 minutes. What was the difference between this Great Britain side and previous Great Britain sides against the Australians? Oh, I think oh, it's a difficult question, is that? Very difficult. The lads, um, they've got a lot, a lot of confidence in themselves. It's taken a long while to, to uh, enforce that confidence in them, and uh, they believe in themselves tactically. They did the right thing. They control the ball. If you control the ball, you control the game. They kick very well. And in the second half, as I said, from the half time, they took that opportunity particularly well, too. Is this a new dawn for Great British Rugby League, beating the Australians? I think they've got a real series on their hands now, but uh, on the no illusions, they'll come out fighting, and uh, the next test series will we'll have to prepare very hard, and, and uh, you know, a similar job will do me fine. We must talk about your captain, Ellery Hanley. Ellery's had a marvellous game, I don't know where he gets his strength, power and balance from. Uh, he's the finest player in the world, without doubt, and uh, we knew we'd got the match winners in the team, we just had to contain their football ability, because Make no mistake, they had a very good football inside us, there. And young Paul Eastwood came of age today. Paul did very well, yes, and took his prize very well, and uh, the last goal he kicked, Paul was right out of, out of the mire. Perfect. Many congratulations, I'm sure you'll be celebrating. Thank you. And Great Britain still on the victorious celebrating lap, and how well, how well they deserve this, and none better than youngster there, Paul Eastwood. Two tries from that lad, and three goals. He came in, he was drafted into the, into the squad when Joe Lydon went down, and hasn't this lad from Hull responded? Those two tries he got, they had to be scored. This will be a great day in his life, and John, he came back after missing a very early goal that could have shattered any youngster. Well, it's a great responsibility to come into a game like this as the goal kicker. It's, it's hard enough to come into a game in your first test and, uh, you know, just be representing your country and you, you, you're trying to play the best to the best of your ability. He's had a great game and uh, possibly a little undue pressure was put on the kid. And certainly, Ellery Hanley, if any man deserves it. There was a little bit of clearing by the Australians as to whether he was the world's greatest player. I think they uh, slightly disputed it, John, didn't they? Oh, there's plenty of great players around. I mean, they, you know, there's 
it, it's an easy thing to say that somebody's the greatest player in the world but you know there's probably half a dozen players who you could give the tag to but uh, nobody would dispute that Elry's name would come up in every conversation so you know he's a, he's a great he's a great credit to the game and two lads there a great advert for Hull on Humberside no wonder Hull sit proud here the top of division one with competitors there like Paul Eastwood and Lee Jackson I don't think John they'll ever get these uh, Great Britain lads off this turf well it doesn't the feeling doesn't come any better than this so you know they might as well they might as well enjoy it they've earned it and uh, it wouldn't matter to them whether they did two victory laps they deserve it they do and certainly as John said there is nothing like winning that uh, first test match that really sets you up it puts you in the driving seat and it makes a tour inside begin to question itself Australia strolled through these uh, early games in this 13 match tour but coach Bobby Fulton now must be wondering well just where did things go wrong why didn't that pack dominate as it has done previously why didn't the wingmen get the chances that, uh, that they should have done and I think when we ask ourselves we begin to think that that man there number 13 Ellery Hanley led the action and it was that try from Martin O'Fire he nipped in from nowhere 